And without objections on the part of my Mr. colleagues, Chairman, Mr. Chairman, this committee hearing Mr. Chairman, is hereby postponed Mr. Chairman, until further notice. Thank you for your attendance. Uh, this whole fracas is about government through DA Undersecretary, Senior Undersecretary Panganiban, granting import allocations to only three importers, All Asian Counter Trade Inc., Sukden Philippines, and Edison Lee Marketing Corp., covering a total import volume of 440,000 metric tons of sugar. At this point, I wish to express my serious disappointment that Undersecretary Panganiban is not here. Gusto kong ipaliwanag nila kung bakit nila napili ang tatlong importer na ito. Gusto kong sabihin nila sa harap ng sambayanan kung bakit nila naisip na pwedeng mag-angkat na walang sugar order. Gusto kong malaman kung bakit matapos sabihin ng Senado ng isang sugar order ay dapat hindi defective, dapat hindi basta-basta pumipirma ang USEC nang walang malinaw na pahintulot ng Pangulo na dapat dumaan sa board ng management ng SRA ang mga importation, bigla-biglang at the behest of an undersecretary, pwede na basta magpasok ng asukal sa kanyang mga piniling importer at pwede silang mag-act in haste without facing any consequences in the civil service? Higit sa lahat, Gusto ko sanang matanong si Yusek Panganiban, saan sila humuhugot ng tapang? Sino ang nagbibigay ng go signal? May mga mataas na opisyal ba na dapat managot dito? O may nagbibida-bida lang at gumawa ng sariling desisyon? And I want to ask these questions, Mr. Chair, in full view of the public, sa harap ng sambayan ng Pilipino, the way we did for the first sugar hearing. They will tell you there were good reasons for choosing the three. Maglalabas sila ng mga resolution of support, statements of confidence, at kung ano-ano pa para sa All Asian, Sukden, at Edison Lee. All Asian counter trade that had a history of smuggling during the period of 1998 to 2000. Sukden, that according to an independent audit report dated 2022, has a capital deficiency of $394,103 and $35,784, quote, resulting from continuing losses Close quote, which, according to the report, quote, raises doubt on the company's ability to continue as a going concern. Close quote. I have a copy of this audit report, Mr. Chair, and I'm here ready to flash this and provide copies as well to all of you, dear colleagues. Friends, in previous sugar orders, there were always several importers given import allocations. Malimit. Mga bente, even more. And there was a clear basis for the allocation. Pero ngayon po, tatlo lang. For a total import of 440,000 metric tons. Para namang sila lang ang mga anak ng Diyos. And you know how crazy big this is, Mr. Chair? Ang kailangan nilang bunuin na performance bond ay bilyong-bilyong piso. But wait, there's more. Para di naman siguro masyadong pagpawisan itong ating tatlong importer, the performance bond was waived for them. A performance bond which guarantees that providers will deliver goods to the Filipino people in timely and satisfactory fashion was waived for them. Here it is, Mr. Chair. I cannot remember the last time that the performance bond was waived. It is bad enough that this huge amount of sugar is to be handled by only three importers, three hand-picked importers. This would already have raised eyebrows from a policy perspective. What is worse 
is that a portion of this shipment was allowed in even before a sugar order. This is so irregular that it was even flagged by the Department of Agriculture through Assistant Secretary James Layug. Here is the letter. And by the Bureau of Customs, which issued a warrant of seizure and detention. So these three points are clear, Mr. Chair. One, the undeniable truth that there was no sugar order establishing a sugar importation program between the period of October 20th, 2022 and February 14th, 2023. Two, a sugar importation program reposed in a sugar order is a necessary prerequisite to importation. That was established in the first Blue Ribbon hearing in which the issue was only whether or not an SO is defective for not having been signed by the president. Ito, wala talaga. And three, any sugar importation above 1 million pesos without a sugar order is considered large-scale agricultural smuggling in violation of Republic Act number no. 10845. Kung mismong opisyal ng gobyerno ang nagpapasimuno ng padrino at favoritism, gaya na lang ng pagpili lamang ng tatlong kumpanya para mag-import ng 440,000 metric tons ng asukal bago pa mailabas ang lehitimong sugar order. Paano pa tayo magtitiwala na ang ginagawa nila ay para sa kapakanan ng bawat Pilipino? But the larger policy issues should not remain uninterrogated. Ginawang tatlo lang ang maaaring mag-angkat ng asukal, giving them not just super profits, but an opportunity to control sugar prices. Imbes na binuksan sa madaming players, hinaya ang pakyawin ng tatlo. Imbes na fair competition, monopolio. Unregulated private monopolies are given the power over what used to be competitive markets. Imbes na magmura ang presyo ng asukal, baka tayo ang mapamura sa paglipad ng presyo at sa napakalaking kita ng mga gahamang ito. Bakit consumer ang magtitiis? Bakit ang ordinaryong Pilipino ang matatamaan? Mr. Chair, dear friends, I would like to close by quoting from the committee report of the Blue Ribbon, which was approved in plenary and presumably bears the wisdom of the Senate. The Senate recommended measures to, and I quote, prevent collusion between SRA importers and other unscrupulous persons. Page 56 of the transcript. Dahil ang pagtingin po ng ating Senado, hindi talaga maganda ang kolyusyon o ang sabuatan. Kaya ang pinakamahalaga ko sigurong tanong, totoo po ba ang photo na ito? At kung totoo, kailan ito kinuha? Mr. Chair, I really hope that we get to the bottom of the issues in this hearing. From the evidence I've seen so far, it seems to me a case of ignorance or violation of our laws by government implementers at best and state-sponsored smuggling at worst. Salamat po, Mr. Chair. Wala na. Tapos ka na. Sorry po, sir. Ang 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 ang